All right, let's talk about cutter comp on the lathe, which is actually called tool nose radius compensation. And the key here is that this only matters when you have to cut something when the Z and X are moving at the same time. Okay, so the previous example we had, uh, the birthday cake example, we're not cutting with the Z and X at the same time, it's irrelevant. Okay, um, but for stuff where you have a radius, you end up having to work with, we are programming the imaginary tooltip, just like this example you're looking at right here, okay? This is a very good example, and I, you know, I, I ended up just using it, looking at the workbook for this one, um, because you really need to see this, because to create something on an arc here, we're programming to here, that doesn't exist, we have to automatically compensate for that, okay? And the machine will do it for you, so it really helps out. Just like, you know, doing this on the, the mill is critical um, to understand. Doing a lathe is equally critical. And the nice thing here is it's pretty simple, okay? So we'll talk about circular interpolation in a minute, but we need to understand this first, okay? So let's take a look at the two main codes we're using. We are going to be using G42 and 41. One is for OD turning, one is for ID turning. So boring, okay? Keep it simple. We're going to have to define a tip orientation. So take a look at this on page 60. We're going to be using tip three for any G42 moves and, and tip two for any G41 movement when we get into boring. So keep it simple for now. There are other tip orientations we'll talk about later. Um, but just understand that for now. And again, I know on the, on the tool room lathes, the tip orientation is not the same, but you program all Haas lathes like a turning center where the OD turning occurs up on tip three and you'll be fine, okay? They work the same. We get into different approach moves, departure moves, things like that. And you'll see that when we get into the program where you don't want, you want to, same, some, of the, some of the same rules apply. You want to lead in and lead out to turn the comp on or off. And the issue here now is you are trying to compensate the radius of the tool, which you must know. You can't just guess. You need to know the radius of the tool and type it in correctly. Okay? So take that into account. Um, it gets into details on approach moves. And these approach moves and departure moves um, are very critical, just like they are with milling. You need to make sure they're, um, you know, in our case, what I recommend, at least double the radius of the tool nose you're trying to compensate for. Okay? Um, very critical. Could be more. Like I said, I end up going like 100,000. So if you got the room, you got the room. You might cut a little bit of air, but when learning, it's not a big deal. Um, I do like this page here, uh, page 61. It goes into, you know, seven steps for using tool nose compensation. Very handy. Okay. Um, approach moves and departure move information on the next page. Critical. Again, lead in, lead out. Um, it gets into 41 and 42, what they're used for. We just talked about that. And then canceling, which is your lead out, which that would be your departure move. Okay. Um, again, read the departure move and even the lead in does not usually, you know, correspond with any portion of the part. You want to do this when you're away from your material if possible. So out in space somewhere. That way you avoid undercutting. Okay. Same with your uh, lead ins. You know, it's not a bad idea. And you'll see, uh, you know, as we'll come in and lead in like that. Okay. Um, we're going to do that going to the workpiece, but the cutter comp is not going to is will be completely on or off as you enter or exit the workpiece whether you're turning or boring um, you'll see some examples of the utter undercutting here um, which can happen all right um, which is why we're doing this it gets into you know entering in tool geometry which you should already be f familiar with and the tool wear offsets but then it gets into you know now we're going to start typing the tool nose radius geometry that's got to be accurate to whatever insert you're using and the tip direction you're going to have to work with. And there are tip direction examples as we pan down through. Again, we're going to be using um, two and three. Two for ID work, three for OD work. But there are other examples you have. Okay, and I know it doesn't look um, necessarily correct to the, to the tool room lathe, but if you ran the turning center, it just makes sense, and that's how you need to program and think about it. Okay, so again, we'll be using two and three. That is very critical for this to work. You only have so many options. This chart sort of comes up on the Haas machine. I think if you hit F1 in the tool offsets when you um, have the tool, dip, tool tip direction highlighted, but we'll take a look at that on the simulator. Um, one of the best pages, again, uh, page 71, has servers, just like the mill book, has restrictions and um, you, know, you can't lead in on a, it has to be a straight move. Um, 
you'll take a look when it comes to activating and deactivating. It goes through, you know, um, make, you know, especially one. Let me get the highlighter here. Right there and there. Okay. Define a clearance distance without cutter compensation to the start point in X and Z. That is double the tool nose radius off the part before you initiate cutter comp. Okay. Same thing on the other side, the other way out. Okay, that's off the part if possible. Okay, do not cancel compensation on any line that is still cutting the part. It's very similar to milling, um, but it's smaller moves here. Yeah, all right, so just watch out for that. Uh, the next example we have is on page uh, 70, uh, 72 here, and it, it is an inact, uh, an, an incorrectly um, turning, turning off cutter compensation example, and that would gouge into the workpiece. All right, so just keep, you know, you can read that. All right, just make sure you give yourself plenty of room. All right, just like, you know, you got to look at the diameter or what you're trying to offset. It's the same idea here. You have to offset at least the diameter or double the nose radius. Again, double the tool radius off the part at least. If you can do more, do it. Okay, that's it is, is in the X and Z. And then it has another example of using tool nose radius compensation. Okay. And they have an example here, still using the G71. Notice they turn the uh, G42 on in the G71 cycle. That is ideal because when we access and reuse it in G70, the, the compensation is already there. Uh, this is a type two because they have an X and Z move on that initial line of the G71. We're gonna be using a type one. So we will only have a X move there, okay? You'll see there is no cutter comp information over on page 76. Um, when it comes to the G70, the G42 on line 112 takes care of it. Okay, so that's about it for the book information. All right, I'll pause here uh, in transition. We'll talk about the circular interpolation on the lathe uh, in the workbook. Uh, we'll be using I's and K's this time. And then we'll take a look at the programming. I have a quick portion of the program to look at. Um, I do not have the G70 on there. You can work with that. I'll try to keep these videos as short as possible. Um, and then we'll look at it in the simulator. And that should be about it for this one. So uh, I'll transition here and cover um, circular interpolation uh, for turning next. Okay, so here's the circular interpolation pages starting on page 41 in the Haas workbook. They are very similar uh, to milling. Okay, we are gonna, I'm gonna force you to use the I, J, K method. Notice that we have I's and K's because we're only working with the X and Z on the lathe. So you could read through this. It should be a little bit redundant. Okay, except for when you get into some of the examples. Um, you need to really pay attention to not so much the Z, but the X. Because a lot of the start points, let's say we look at this example down here. When you start, and actually what I'll do is I'll zoom in, so bear with me. I'll zoom in on this one. And what I want to focus on is right here. When you start this example, if it works here, come on. You want to start here, okay, with your arc to create your arc, right? The issue is, is that you got to program for this position. So if that's a quarter inch radius, it's going to be 0.5 from two inches or X 1.5 is this position because the radius is only from here to here okay it's gonna be the same for this point okay if this is um, well it's already got it so never mind it's, it's there already they gave it to you which is kind of nice but this one you might have to calculate it might not have that okay our start points easy it's uh, gonna be two inches okay actually let me erase this quickly all right well, hopefully that makes sense uh, you have to program start and end points and this would just have a k minus quarter of an inch it's with a z not a big deal it's the start points that always gets people okay so if i zoom out here and stop drawing and we'll get over some of these examples okay this is another one okay this goes you know from the uh, tools current position program the start path and then it goes through it okay again this end point okay is on diameter so 1.5 plus 2, okay, for that endpoint, okay? So 2.5, 3.5, because this is a radial distance and all X moves are on diameter. So pay attention to that. 
It gets into some ID work. Uh, go ahead and work through it. We will fo focus on ID work later. Um, has some other options here. Uh, some arcs that are in the middle. Don't worry about that for now. Uh, we'll get into that. I just want to get this simple example done with pretty easy I's and K's. Uh, so we're covering tunnels, radius, compensation at the same time. Um, I am going to force the I and K method. Don't use R for now. And that's really it. Um, focus on these pages. Really focus on these two examples. You can get into boring. That's fine. Um, for now, but really focus on this example. And again, if you do the milling first, this is very, very similar. Um, the only difference is that you're working with I and K and that the all X moves are on diameter. Okay, so pay attention to that. Um, so I'll transition here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transition into the, um, I'm going to transition into the uh, program I have in Discriminator. We're not going to program it together. I'll just go through and explain it because, again, the G71 and all that stuff is kind of the same, but I'm going to point out some of the differences. Um, and again, I, what I recommend you do is don't delete the program you already did for OD turning, uh, type 1 cycle. Save as part 2, and then you don't have to rewrite it. You can copy and paste a lot of information. It'll save you a ton of time. So I'll pause here, and uh, we'll come back in Discriminator, and I'll point out some differences in this program. Then we'll go into the simulator, and uh, that'll be it for this one. So I'll we'll transition here. All right, so this is the part. Again, uh, what I want to do is just show you a couple things here. Again, I'm not going to go through the entire thing. I had the program up on Discriminator. I'll show you in a minute. But take a look. Again, the start point is here on diameter. Okay, this would be a K negative. This would be an I positive. Okay, but like this is on diameter. Okay, so that's what you got to be careful for. Diameters. So if this is a 16th, and again, you'll see on my example, I end up rounding those down to actually a 16th to keep the math, you know, 0625 to keep the math easier. So it's going to be 375 minus eighth of an inch is going to be this diameter. Okay? 375 plus an eighth of an inch will be this location for the endpoint. Okay? So just keep that in mind. All right? That is the hardest part about this. We will have tool nose radius compensation turn. We'll end up facing the workpiece. We'll come away. We'll come and when we program our can cycle. We'll turn the TNR on right there in a linear move here and start working around. Okay. You also notice I am cutting further back. That's be, that will be for in another module when we part these off. That we'll take care of it then. All right. Um, so let's uh, let's pan over to Discriminator. I just want to show you the print quick. Um, and this is available obviously on Blackboard. So uh, let me get Discriminator on and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so in Discriminator, see our example. This is just a simple turning cycle. Um, you know, faces the workpiece, okay? Um, constant service speed, C200, not feeding particularly fast. Going to X.1, or X2.1. Now again, this is a two inch stock that we're working with. All standard turning parts that we're gonna be working with will be two inch stock. I'm going to 2.1, okay? That gives us a nice air. It might take an air pass, but it gives us clearance, plenty of clearance later. Now, again, would I do that at work? Probably not. But in here, it gives you plenty of you know lead in and lead out, especially lead out for us um, to work with that. So we have our turning our, our roughing cycle. Then we have we're turning our comp on. That requires some of the parameters in the controller what we'll look at. Feeding, going to X250. Why X250? That's the bottom of that radius like I talked about. It's going to be 3 eighths minus the 16th twice, or eighth of an inch, okay? Then we go to Z0, feeds in, and then we start cutting our radii with I's and K's all the way around. And I go back quite a bit. Then I go to X2.0, which is the stock. The stock should be ending right there. Then I turn the comp off from X2.0 to X2.1. There's that 100,000 lead out that is off of our part, okay? I think that'll serve you well. Um, I think it'll be less likely to crash. Again, you don't have to go 100 thousandths, but I think that that will keep it real easy. Also, I just keep it symmetrical here. Okay, that way the path looks square. Again, it might cut a little bit of air, but I'm not worried about it. All right. Um, I'd rather cut a little bit of air than have a groove or have it, um, you know, damage the workpiece. So, Again, we all we are off the part. Some people might argue that yes, we are off the part over here, so we could turn the comp off here. Um, but I like to be away from the material in general, okay? Especially for your first time working with tool nose radius compensation. Uh, so that's our example, okay? You'll see how it cuts through. You can zoom in and see all the radii look pretty decent. Okay, you see our lead-in move, okay? But lead-in move occurs 
with the comp turning on, and then it goes around the workpiece. Okay? So there it is in Discriminator. Okay? Now, I did not finish this program. Um, you do have to run Tool 2 and go through a G70. Um, I just put an M01 there. M01 is not a bad thing to put between your tool changes. That way you can put optional stop on the controller. It'll stop between tools. Not a bad way to go. Um, it's up to you. The only thing you got to be careful with is M00 and M01. M00 will stop regardless. M01 requires the op stop button on the controller. Is that you got to make sure you turn your spindle on and things like that. Spindle coolant on, you know, after you turn this on. Otherwise, they'll stay off and you'll run into issues. Um, so there it is in Discriminator. Um, if you're stuck, again, I know you can see this and just type it in. I really recommend that you try to work through this because um, if I give you a quiz or something and you can't, you know, I got to make sure that you can do this on your own without just copying what I did. Um, but there's the example. Okay. And uh, we'll pan over now to the simulator, watch it run, take a look at some of the inputs into the tool offsets, and uh, that should be it. All right, so here we are. Here we are on the machine. So you'll see the X and Z geometry. They're just numbers. I'm on a simulator, um, but you already know how to enter those in. The difference is, is I have a 15 thou nose radius in for offset one. And then the tip direction is tip direction three. If you hit F1, you'll see your options. So just select the one you want, and that's all you need. Okay. So we can cursor over. There's not a lot we're going to need here. Where it'd be used to comp it in um, for size, um, but. You know, we already covered X and Z. All you're going to need is the radius that you're currently using. Make sure you measure it or check the insert pack. And then make sure the tip direction is correct. Then after that, it does it all on its own. Um, so if we go to edit memory graphics and just hit cycle star and you'll see it run. Um, so that's really it. You'll see it looks very similar to Discriminator, except for this does show the um, obviously the G71 working. I am stopping at an M01. Um, like I talked about, instead of an M M30 um, or a uh, you know M02, that's because I just roughed this. I expect you to be able to do the finish pass by now. It's pretty simple. Um, so again, the key here is going to be in offset, and to make sure that you have a radius and the correct tip orientation and or tip direction. Beyond that, it should run successfully okay and you'll see right now I'm running and that's it okay so I'm not gonna make you work all watch all through this um, that really is all there is to it um, if you have any questions please let me know um, but besides that uh, thanks for watching